वेलकम एक नाजरीन पर नई खाते के ऑफिस में अहम तकरीब जारी है अच तवा के पैरो बीहर वछेलो आ इंटरनेशनल ह्यूमैनिटेरियन अपील फॉर द यूनाइटेड नेशंस एंड नॉन गवर्नमेंटल ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस विल बिल्ड अपॉन दैट स्ट्रांग फाउंडेशन वी विल कंट्रीब्यूट टू द वर्क ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट एंड आवर असिस्टेंस विल बी अंडर द गाइडेंस एंड द कोऑपरेशन ऑफ द नेशनल डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट अथॉरिटी and the provincial disaster management authorities i'm very grateful to the assistance of member states and even private citizens in in developed countries who've given for this response thank you i'm asking you to do more because it's the right thing thank you very much sir hardney i now request the chairman of the national disaster management authority NDMA Lieutenant General Akhtar Nawaz to give us an overview of the flood situation in the country. Before. Honorable Foreign Minister, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum and a very good afternoon. The presentation that I am going to make is based on a PowerPoint. It's more technical in nature to make you understand the impact, the losses, and what are you know the needs. i would draw your attention to the very first page of the, of the presentation which actually sets next stay on to previous one yeah which actually you know talks about the climate change and ultimately you know its its outcome next please yeah if you look at this slide we lost this spring this year 2022 we moved directly from winter to the summers that was followed by four heat waves and where we faced forest fires and our large tracts of the forest were remained on fire for weeks uh, we were followed with uh, the drought warnings and this is exactly where the united nations community here in pakistan along with ndma and all other stakeholders started talking about and worrying about what is going to come as an outcome of this drought but then came you know what we faced the early and unprecedented monsoon with very horrific consequences next please yeah what we had thought about you know our meteorological department they thought that this time based on their assessment and studies the monsoon rains are going to be slightly above normal and once they said slightly above normal it meant 25 to 30% above normal next please based on you know this assessment through the effort with our all stakeholders that is the provincial disaster management authorities the federal agencies the un offices and systems here the humanitarian organizations we carved out a contingency plan for the moon monsoon 2022 and issued this plan on 12th of may this was immediately followed by an exercise simulation exercise jointly conducted by united nations and the national disaster management authority where all the stakeholders relevant to the disaster management participated overwhelmingly next please coming on to the what happened after having gone through you know the uh, the estimates that we had forecasted contrarily this is what we got overall in pakistan 186% more rainfall compared to 30 years normal average the same got the highest 466% followed by the balochistan even all other you know provinces and regions are also above the normal average of 30 years next please Uh, this is a very instructive slide and i would like to explain it in a bit more detail our traditional monsoon areas lie in the north of the country uh, these are into the azad jammu and kashmir northern and central parts of punjab khyber pakhtunkhwa uh, eastern portions of balochistan and the northern parts of sind uh, this time instead of going to the traditional areas the monsoon actually first hit us in the first two spells into the province of balochistan and south khyber pakhtunkhwa including the two 
districts of Diyai Khan and Tank, followed by a mass, massive, you know, build-up of the rain in the next three spells into Sindh, and then moving up north, uh, the last spell towards northern part, including, you know, Azad Kashmir, uh, KP, northern Punjab, and Gilgit, Baltistan. If you look at, you know, the, this slide, this explains how much the rainwater has come down from the skies directly into various areas, coupled with the flash floods, hill torrents, leading to urban flooding. Uh, this is something we had never thought of and we had never experienced. And that is where, you know, the challenge lies. Next, please. Yeah. Uh, as an outcome of all this rainfall and what we got as an outcome of the climate change, today, 72 of our districts, 221 of our tehsils, and 6,597 of the union councils have been formally declared as the calamity hit by the provincial governments. And the number is likely to increase as we speak because the calamity continues. Next. I would just draw your attention to these couple of slides from the SUPACO, our, you know, satellite producing agency. If you look at, you know, the left cut, it is the 11th of August. And if you look at it over here, it is the 23rd of August. Draw the comparison how this was on 11th and how this is. This all indicates the total inundation. Next, please. If you look at the second one, uh, this is where, you know, the, the river Indus moves, and this is the Larkana. The complete district has been inundated. Next. Uh, if we talk of the numbers, uh, two, more than 2 million acres of the agriculture land, 33 million population, 5,100, uh, 5,107 people rescued, and the persons in the camps are near 500,000. Next, please. The brunt, the casualties in terms of the deaths, as well as in terms of injuries, the figure has crossed 1,100 in case of deaths and 1,600 in case of injuries. The brunt has been borne by the vulnerable, that is the women, children, and the elderly. This is likely to increase due to massive inundation, where the houses are coming down, and people are still facing the challenges to the survival and life. Next, please. If you look at this slide, this speaks of, you know, the infrastructural damages and also the loss of livestock. The most critical out of these are the bridges on our critical arteries and roads, uh, the damages to the houses in a very, very large number, and this is unfortunately likely to increase. And also, the loss, massive loss of the livestock. Next, please. Uh, once we speak, you know, our two major uh, water retaining structures, that is the Tarbela Dam and Mangla Dam. The Tarbela Dam has gone to its full capacity, whereas Mangla Dam, which used to be filled by this time, is still vacant by around 53%. And the reason is that its catchment areas, traditional monsoon areas, didn't receive the rainfall. Next, please. Uh, as we speak, uh, this is what is the condition of our various uh, rivers running down from north to the south. We are still having, you know, high floods, medium floods in certain, and a very high flood at Nushara. But however, the situation is not very, you know, it's it's not it's it's under control. There is nothing to worry much at the moment. We are grappling with this situation that is being faced here. Next, please. I'll just, you know, uh, uh, show you some of the videos, very selected one, to, to just highlight how difficult and, you know, tough it was. Can we have the video? This is from the lower deep, and you will see how the our communication infrastructure is being washed away. from Khyber Pakhtun Point. This 
one is the game, you know, one of the hard work that got washed away. Next one, you will see how the infrastructure, the buildings have been washed away. Adad Jammu in Kashmir and Balochistan in the Bulan area. This one in the Lasbela near Krachi, a part of Tonsa Berad in Islamabad. of the houses, this is how thousands of houses and complexes are inundated in the province of Sindh as well as in Balochistan. Mandar. If you look at, you know, this is the Dasbela, how the people are, you know, finding the safety wading through the uh, gushing uh, water. This is where the people are being helped out to, to the safety. Next. Uh, as we speak, you know, the, the people are being, you know, taken out from the from the inundated areas, uh, this is what you know was in the Karachi area. Look at you know the people really stranded into in, in the mid of you know these running streams. Next, uh, this is what is you know the condition as we pull them out. You know, put them to some kind of temporary shelters. If you look at you know the infrastructure, the massive damage to the critical infrastructure all across the country. Uh, this is where, you know, the vulnerable group that I was talking about, you know, stays. Next. Uh, this is what, this is a very critical, you know, the infrastructure that we are losing and this is the extent of the damage. It will take a lot of time and massive, you know, finances to rebuild. Next please. Uh, coming on to, you know, uh, the response by the federal government, the provincial governments, uh, rescue relief by civil administration, uh, disaster management authorities, uh, duly supported by the armed forces, even the civil society, the humanitarian organization continues as we speak. Uh, a committee has been established at the federal level, which is headed by uh, Mr. Hassan Iqbal, chairman, uh, the chairman of the committee, is uh, the Minister for Planning and Development. There are a couple of other ministers who are guiding and coordinating the uh, rescue and relief effort. The emergency has been declared at the national level. Army has been requisitioned to carry out, you know, the relief and rescue operations in support of the disaster management agencies. There has been an enhancement of the compensation package. I will not go into the detail that has already been partly covered. Next. Uh, Bainzir Income Support Program, one of, you know, the best social protection program is already, you know, rolling out at a very fast speed into all provinces. Uh, NDMA carried out a rapid need assessment and shared this one with the, our Ministry of uh, EAD, uh, so as to, you know, share it with the donors, and that has already been done, and they are working fast pace on it. Uh, there was a donor conference, uh, a number of them actually, uh, by, by in the Ministry of uh, EAD, as well as, you know, it, it headed by the Prime Minister, a giant survey by the Provincial Disaster Management Authorities, duly supported and assisted by NDMA and the Army has already taken off in the province of Balochistan and it will go on to the other provinces as well. Next please. Uh, coming on to the relief assistance, so far the relief assistance that has already reached to the flood affected is a flash. Uh, as we speak, more and more is pouring in because the need is so high and it is, it is so deficient, so less for us to, you know, give them the requisite, the, the, the relief effort. Next please. Uh, as we speak, the, the rescue and relief continues. The people are being, you know, pulled out, provided with the medical facilities, with the shelter. Next. Uh, humanitarian organizations are also, you know, moving in and trying to help out. Next. 
If you look at you know these these pictures, there are so many humanitarian organisations at their own that they are you know moving in, being coordinated by provincial disaster management authorities at province as well as district uh, as well as the national disaster management authority at the national level. Next, uh, wherever it is, it is you know some we find some space. The, the tent villages are being set up. The medical is you know being afforded, and also you know the food parcels are being distributed. Next. Next week. But still, the people are being, you know, uh, brought to the safety using all kind of expedients, boats, etc. Next, uh, as we speak, we have, you know, massive effort of the aerial lift capability. The Pakistan Air Force, Pakistan Army, Navy have put, you know, their all aircrafts available to do the rescue and relief operations. Next. Uh, coming on to the last slide, what is you know the immediate and critical need? Already the earlier speakers have mentioned about it. Uh, these include the shelters and tents, uh, food security, including the nutrition for the children and for lactating women, health support, water and sanitation, support for the livestock, and of course, uh, once we move out of it, uh, reconstruction and rehabilitation. I thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for patient hearing. Thank you very much, sir. I would now like to hand over the floor to Mr. Ramesh Rajasingham, the head and representative of the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs in Geneva and the director of their coordination division of OCHA. Uh, he will now conduct the proceedings in Geneva. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Excellencies, uh, distinguished uh, delegates and colleagues, uh, we have just heard from our distinguished uh, speakers from Islamabad on the uh, enormous impact of floods and the priority needs and in response to the requirements of the Pakistan Flood, uh, flood Response Plan. Uh, here in Geneva, I am joined uh, on the podium by His Excellency Ambassador Khalil Hashmi, Permanent yes. Representative of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan to the United Nations Office and other international organizations in Geneva, the UN High Commissioner for uh, Refugees, uh, Mr. Philip Grandi, the Under Secretary General for National Society Development and Operations Coordination of the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, Mr. Javier Castellanos Mosquera. And in this room, uh, we have with us also representatives of member states and partner agencies and organizations will have a chance to contribute to our discussions if they so wish to do so. I would now like to hand the floor to His Excellency Ambassador Khalil Pashkin. Thank you, Ramesh. Um, Honorable Foreign Minister, Minister of for Planning and Minister of State Foreign Affairs of Pakistan, Chair of the National Disaster Management Authority in Pakistan, uh, Mr. Julian Harness, UN Coordinator, UN Resident Coordinator in Islamabad, uh, High Commissioner Filippo Grandi here in uh, Geneva, Under Secretary General for IFRC, Director Ocha, uh, Ramesh, thank you so much. I want to begin uh, by thanking you all here in Geneva for making the time and, and for attending this briefing. On behalf of uh, the Pakistan Mission in Geneva, I'd like to echo our gratitude to the UN country in Islamabad and Ocha office in Geneva. Thank you so much for all your support in putting this briefing together. We have just uh, over, uh, heard the overview of the unprecedented calamity and catastrophe, uh, its human impact, uh, the damage and needs assessment. Um, and as the Secretary General said, uh, Pakistan has had the monsoon on steroids. So I would, wouldn't want to uh, go into those details. I just wanted to make a few points uh, from Geneva's vantage point all that we work on a daily basis here has been deeply affected in Pakistan, ranging from people's access to food, safe housing, work, education, telecommunications infrastructure, the environment, and human displacement on a massive scale. What has happened is uh, more than just a humanitarian crisis, and today's appeal in many ways is a call to action. Just in the past few years, Floods have hit almost all regions globally, from floods in Germany and Belgium in the same time period last year to the recent floods in Sudan, Australia and the United States, 
all of which have claimed vicious human rights and caused extensive damage. In almost all these cases, these extreme floods have been preceded by extreme heat waves. The pattern is clear here. The scientific evidence points to one fact, that climate change has exacerbated these extreme weather events. The rains in Pakistan this year have been around 90% heavier than the average downfall. Developing countries have been trying to balance their climate commitments and developing needs for a long time now. However, one such calamity erodes years of work. Our common future will be determined by what we do. It is clear that none of us can afford to delay actions that are critical to our survival or wait until disasters arrive at our doorsteps. An early and meaningful action, collective action on climate change is therefore indispensable. In terms of the appeal and follow-up Pakistan mission in Geneva, remain at your disposal for any additional information or clarification. I want to once again thank you all for your presence here today. Over to you, uh, Thank you very much, Ambassador, for your remarks. Uh, allow me to now invite the UN High Commissioner to introduce uh, Mr. Philip Grandy for his remarks. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Ramesh. Honorable Ministers, Resident Coordinator, Ambassador Dia Khalil, colleagues, thank you very much for convening this urgent meeting, urgent in so many ways as we have heard, to draw the world's attention to the plight of millions of lives devastated, as we have seen by these catastrophic floods. And our solidarity and condolences 